Imagine a man, a financial genius or perhaps a fool, who managed to turn the world of finance on its head. This man was Charles Ponzi, a name that would become synonymous with fraud and deception. Born in Italy in the late 19th century, Ponzi was a charismatic and ambitious character who dared to dream big. He embarked upon a journey to the land of opportunities, America, with less than $3 in his pocket and a heart full of hope. Yet his story was far from the typical immigrant tale. The American dream for Ponzi took a turn down a dark and twisted road. His name would go down in history, not as a beacon of success, but as a cautionary tale of greed and deceit. Little did the people know they were about to witness a financial scandal like no other. In the heart of Boston, in 1919, a scheme was born that would forever bear the name of Charles Ponzi. A wily Italian immigrant, Ponzi stumbled upon an opportunity that seemed too good to pass up. He discovered a loophole in the system of international reply coupons, which were essentially prepaid postage stamps. The idea was simple. Buy these coupons in a country where they were cheap, then sell them in another where they were expensive. But Ponzi saw beyond the postage stamps. He saw a chance for arbitrage, a golden opportunity to exploit the differences in currency values and the cost of these reply coupons. With a glint in his eye, Ponzi set out to capitalize on this disparity. He promised investors a whopping 50% return on their investment in just 45 days, or, if they were patient, a 100% return in 90 days. The premise was simple. He would use the investors' money to buy international reply coupons at a low price abroad, then sell them at a high price in the States. Like a wildfire, Ponzi's scheme spread, ensnaring thousands in its deceptive trap. The year was 1920, and Charles Ponzi, the man behind the curtain, was living the life of luxury. His operation, the Securities Exchange Company, had grown exponentially. It was a financial whirlwind, sweeping up the hard-earned money of unsuspecting investors and spinning out promises of extraordinary returns. Ponzi's lifestyle became a testament to his supposed success. He traded his modest life for a mansion in Lexington, Massachusetts, complete with a heated swimming pool and a pair of luxury automobiles. He wore the finest suits, dined at the best restaurants and rubbed shoulders with Boston's elite. His affluence was on full display, a beacon attracting more and more investors to his scheme. Yet, amid the opulence, the scheme was fundamentally flawed. Ponzi was paying old investors with the money from new ones, a financial house of cards that was destined to collapse. But such was the allure of the golden promise, a 50% return in just 45 days, that the investors turned a blind eye to the potential risks. They trusted Ponzi implicitly, entranced by his charisma and the dazzling wealth he flaunted. Ponzi was on top of the world, basking in the glow of his illusory success. He reveled in the adoration of his investors, the respect of his peers, and the lavish lifestyle he had always dreamed of. But behind the scenes, things were not as they seemed. The operation was bleeding money, and Ponzi was struggling to keep up with the ever-growing payouts. In the midst of the glamour and the grandeur, the first whispers of doubt began to circulate. Some questioned the sustainability of Ponzi's operation, while others pointed out the lack of tangible assets behind his promises. As Ponzi basked in his ill-gotten wealth, the seeds of his downfall were already being sown. As with all houses of cards, Ponzi's empire was destined to collapse. Charles Ponzi, the man behind the infamous Ponzi scheme, found himself at the center of a whirlwind of investigations. The Boston Post, a local newspaper, initiated the scrutiny, casting doubt on the sustainability of his operations. Their relentless reporting led to a deep dive into his finances, revealing the cracks in his grand facade. The Post's journalists, the unsung heroes of this story, uncovered that Ponzi's company, the Securities Exchange Company, was not earning profits from international reply coupons, as Ponzi had claimed. Instead, they discovered a sinister reality. Ponzi was merely paying old investors with the money from new ones, a classic example of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Following this revelation, 
The authorities swooped in. Ponzi was arrested on August 12, 1920, charged with mail fraud. With his arrest, the magnitude of his deceit started to unravel publicly. Investors panicked, rushing to withdraw their money, but the coffers were empty. Ponzi's scheme had cost his investors a staggering $20 million, a colossal sum in the early 20th century. The fallout was devastating. Thousands of investors, many of whom had poured in their life savings, were left penniless. They had bought into Ponzi's dream of quick riches, only to wake up to a nightmare of financial ruin. The man they had trusted had built his empire on a bed of lies. Ponzi's trial was swift. He pled guilty and was sentenced to five years in prison. However, the sentence did little to alleviate the pain of those who had been duped. The damage was done, the money was gone, and the trust was broken. In the end, Ponzi's castle of lies crumbled, leaving nothing but financial ruin and a legacy of deceit. Even though Ponzi's reign ended in disgrace, his name lives on, immortalized in the scheme that fooled the world and left a trail of financial devastation in its wake. The name Charles Ponzi is now synonymous with financial fraud, a dark reminder of the perils of greed and deception. His scheme, a twisted dance of deceit and delusion, not only left countless victims in its wake, but also reshaped the landscape of financial regulations. The fallout from the Ponzi scheme was a catalyst for change. It led to the enactment of stricter laws and regulations to protect investors and prevent similar fraudulent activities. These reforms have played a crucial role in shaping the financial industry as we know it today, fostering a climate of transparency, accountability, and trust. The legacy of Charles Ponzi goes beyond his notorious scheme. It serves as a stark reminder that unchecked ambition, coupled with a lack of ethics, can lead to catastrophic consequences. His story underscores the importance of financial literacy, vigilance, and skepticism in navigating the complex world of finance. Charles Ponzi, the man who promised fortunes and delivered ruin, remains a cautionary tale in the world of finance. The story of Charles Ponzi serves as a stark reminder that if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. This enigmatic figure birthed a scheme that promised astronomical returns, a scheme that skyrocketed him to the pinnacle of wealth and fame. But as we've seen, this was not a tale of rags to riches, but rather rags to riches to rags. His fall was as rapid as his rise, and in the end, all that was left was a legacy of deception and financial ruin. From this tale, we can glean several lessons. Firstly, always scrutinize investment opportunities, no matter how enticing they may seem. Secondly, remember that sustainable success is rarely achieved overnight. And lastly, let the story of Charles Ponzi be a reminder to always prioritize ethics and honesty in all your financial dealings. To uncover more intriguing tales from the world of business and finance, subscribe to BizBytes and give this video a like. Remember, knowledge is your best defense against becoming the next victim of a Ponzi scheme.